Hi everyone, my name is Melissa and I'm the Sustainable Procurement Manager at YPO. Sustainability is a word that in today's world most people have heard of, but what does it actually mean? In this short be recorded webinar we'll be taking a closer look at sustainability, trying to figure out what it means and what you can do to become more sustainable. Back in 1987, the Brundtland Commission, which was established by the United Nations, published a report called Our Common Future. The Commission aimed to unite countries in order to pursue sustainable development together. Over 30 years later, the most common definition of sustainability still comes from this report. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The notion of sustainability is generally recognised as having three pillars, economic, environment and social. And they are often referred to as profit, planet and people. Yeah. Yet when most people hear the word sustainability, they only think about one pillar, the environment. Protecting our environment is obviously very critical. Taking action to stop the devastating effects of climate change, reducing the reliance of single-use plastic, or ending deforestation are all extremely important for the world around us, but it is only one third of the equation if we want to progress with sustainable development. Social value is a term that is becoming increasingly important, and common definitions of social value include improving the economic, social, and environmental well-being of a particular area. Now that sounds familiar, right? But when people hear the word social value, they often think of the fluffy stuff that gives businesses or people a nice warm fuzzy feeling. The obvious similarities between sustainability and social value are not hard to see when you consider these definitions. However, they are often treated as very separate concepts. And none of this is new. Businesses have been participating in corporate social responsibility for decades. CSR can be traced as far back as the 1800s where businesses were concerned about employee well-being and living conditions. So low-cost housing was built near to some factories for the workers, and in the 1900s, some businesses started to create pension funds to help support their employees. The term CSR was popularised in the 1960s, and by the early 2000s, CSR had become an essential strategy for most organisations. The UK even appointed a minister for CSR in March 2000. For me, sustainability, social value and CSR are all underpinned by responsibility. Being a responsible business and looking after your employees and the place where you operate, being a responsible citizen and looking out for your neighbours or doing your bit to reduce waste, or being a responsible school and really preparing children for their future in the world. Sustainable business is just good business. Sustainable procurement is just good procurement. And a sustainable school is just a good school who are in touch with the world around them. For anyone who truly wants to become more sustainably responsible, they also need to think about their social impact as well as their environmental impact. In 2015, the United Nations launched the Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs. They are a set of 17 goals that aim to target the most critical issues in the world, aiming to end poverty, hunger, inequalities and fight climate change by 2030. In order to achieve the goals, the government, businesses and individuals need to work together to build a better future for everyone. And in my opinion, schools have a major role to play in this, both in the terms of the curriculum they deliver to children and young people and the actions schools take themselves. Quality education is a goal in its own right, which is concerned with ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education is available for everyone in society. An education today system isn't just maths and English. Teaching children about climate change and the impact their lives have on the environment and society is now an important feature in many parts of the curriculum. Many teachers have taken the call and undergone the UN Climate Change Teacher Training course, which YPO has sponsored. And the regions around the UK are calling for at least one teacher in every school to hold such qualifications. However, it's also important for schools to promote all the SDGs to make such a much greater impact. Key to this is understanding the goals. It can be quite daunting to figure out what they mean, and there are some crossovers between the different goals, 
but there are areas that the schools are already teaching or working on which have an impact. In the UK, 8 million people are thought to be living in food poverty and 3 million children are at risk of holiday hunger. I know a lot of schools work with their local authorities and local charities or food banks to design schemes to alleviate some of the pressures of holiday hunger. And teaching children about where food comes from and making healthy choices can lead to positive relationships with food, reducing childhood obesity and increasing health and well-being. Encouraging girls to continue with STEM subjects can have a greater impact on gender equality by breaking down any gender stereotypes. According to recent UCAS data, 35% of STEM students in higher education in the UK are women. And the data shows that between 2017 and 2018, only 19% of students studying for a computer sciences degree were female. By inspiring girls from a young age in STEM subjects, this can have an impact on reducing inequalities throughout their lifetime and decent work and economic growth by bringing real diversity into their workplace. Schools not only teach the curriculum, but they also have a critical role in preparing them for higher education or to go into the world of work. Productive employment and decent work for all will not be achieved with the high numbers of young people classed as not in employment, education or training, or NEAT. Recent figures show that there are 800,000 NEATs in the UK, which equates to 11.6% of all young people. Schools can look at supporting children with CV writing and interview skills preparations. Working with organisations such as Inspiring the Future can connect schools with businesses and volunteers from the world of work who can motivate children and give them an insight into a wide range of interesting and varied jobs. In the UK, there are 14.3 million people classes living in relative poverty and around 34% of children are in poverty. By providing quality education, both in terms of the curriculum and softer um, skills, the ultimate aim is that children can have a successful future and no longer be classed as living in poverty. Protecting our natural environment is crucial to reducing our CO2 emissions and combating biodiversity loss. The Woodlands Trust has estimated that an additional 1.5 million hectares of woodlands is needed, and that's around the same land area as Yorkshire. Restoring our woodlands will create havens for our wildlife and boost biodiversity. Schools can check out the Woodland Trust website for more information about their big climate fight back and for free trees for schools to plant. Essentially, most of this isn't real rocket science and schools are already doing some or all of these activities and in some cases, even more. What I do hope is that this may have given you an idea into the wider world of sustainability and encourages you to think about life beyond environment and climate change. Taking a holistic approach to sustainability to increase the positive environmental, economic and social impacts can really drive the change to make the world a better place. Thank you.